Here we go. So what we're going to try to do today is to go beyond two cards. You've seen trees are nice. Hopefully you've done a bunch of the trees and you're getting the hang of them. They're very visual. And in fact, they're still my fallback for if it's the same event over and over and over. Even if it's five E cards, as long as it's the same event over and over and over, I'll solve it with a tree approach. But today we're going to say, what if it's not? So for experiments with only a few draws from a deck of cards or pot, it's usually easiest to use a tree. My rule of thumb, Luke, two or three. Two always, three usually. More than two or three things, we're going to use a permutation combination approach. We're going to start out by looking at two cards, getting an answer, and seeing if we can get that same answer using permutations and combinations. So suppose two cards are drawn without replacement from a shuffle deck of 52 cards. Calculate the probability that they're both aces. Let's fill in this tree. So it would be ace, not ace, ace, not ace, ace, not ace. How many aces are there in the deck? Four out of? So this first level would be 4 out of 52 and 48 out of 52. Right? Now, Masked Avenger, down this branch here, I've picked an ace. Oh, Masked Avenger, how many aces are now left in the deck? Who was that masked man? We'll forever wonder. How many non-aces are in the deck? Double check, adds to one, pretty sure we're right. Down this branch, down this branch, oh French maid, we did not get an ace. How many aces are left in the deck, madame? Out of 52 cards? 51. How many non-aces? 48 out of, no, not 48, Mr. Duick. We didn't get an ace. So 47 out of 51, and I could tell I'd written the wrong thing because I did my little adding check, and I got 52 over 51, and I thought, oh, I goofed. Now, the probability that they're both aces, that's the probability that the first card is an ace and the probability that the second card is an ace given that the first card is an ace. That's the formula approach. Um... I'm pretty sure it's that branch. The tree approach to me is much more visual, right? Ace, ace. What times what? Four out of 52 times three out of 51. Now, I know this is 12 out of 26, 52, but this time I'd like you to get your calculators out and reduce that for me, please. Because when we use the combination approach, it's going to give us reduced fractions or decimals. So now we're going to start to finally reduce our fractions at the very, very end. What is 12 over 2652 in lowest terms? 1 over 221? Okay. This is nothing new. In fact, I gave you this on your last quiz. I don't know if it was two aces, but I gave you questions like this. What we want to do is see if we can take a combinatorics approach. So using combinations, it says this. How many unordered, that's how I know it's a combination, unordered. How many unordered ways are there to pick two from 52? Well, that's from 52 choose, unordered, two. On your calculator, what is 52 choose, blah, what is 52 choose two? Someone crunch that for me, please. Sorry? 1, 3, 2, 6. Okay. That's the total number of ways to pick two cards. You know how many ways you can get two cards? That many ways. Remember I've said to you if we can count it, we can solve it. We're going to use that here. How many ways are there to get two aces? Well, how many aces are there in the deck? Four choose two of them. What is four choose two? Six? Can someone check? Is six over 1326? Does that reduce to one over 221? It does? So 
So my point here, Chelsea, is it looks like there is a way to get here with chooses. Now, it's going to seem a little confusing still on this page. I'm going to give you an easy way to get to the equation on the next page. All I'm trying to convince you right now, Chelsea, is we got the same answer with two different methods. And I think this can be extended to more than two cards because it's not a tree. You could also have got there with permutations. You could have said, I'd like to find the number of ordered ways to pick 2 from 52, which is 52P2. What is 52P2? 2652? I happen to notice that that's the bottom of my original fraction way up here. How many ways are there to permutate two aces? How many aces are in the deck? 4P2. How much do you want to bet that that's 12, is it? Is it? So you could say 12 out of 26, 52, the number of aces divided by the number of cards. If you can count it, you can solve it. And that also works to 1 over 221. So, Matt, all I'm trying to do right now is convince you, apparently, I can get the same answer with combinations or permutations. Now, I'm going to be honest. I almost never use permutations. Combinations are card questions. Because when you're dealing a deck of cards, when you're dealing a poker hand step, you don't care when you got the ace. You only care if you got the ace. Whether it was your last card or your first, who cares as long as it's in there. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to do some five card hands. And I'm going to give you a better way than this little scrawl to do multi-card hands or if we're picking marbles what if we're picking five marbles like the marble questions what if we want four or five colored marbles instead of just two or one example one Hannah how, how many cards are we picking in example one what's the first word five tree say no no two cards yeah three maybe five no Cards, though, the order does not matter. What's the first hand they want me to get? Part A says, what do we want? A spade flush. Okay? Here is how I'm going to solve this. I'm going to bring back, because it's a choose, it's a combination, our old friend, the bucket. Over here, I'm going to draw spades and not spades. How many spades are there in the deck, Greg? How many non-spades? 39, compliment. How many spades do they want me to choose? Five. How many non-spades do they want me to choose? Trick question. Zero. Okay. Put your pencils down and look up once you've written that. Here is how you can calculate the odds of getting five spades. It's going to be the total number of ways to get five spades divided by the total number of ways to get five any cards. Let me say that again. It's going to be the total number of sp ways to get five spades divided by the total number of ways to pick five any cards. 13 choose five and 39 choose zero divided by 52 choose five. Five spades and zero others divided by all the cards. Which is what? Go to your calculator, please. And this time it's going to be a decimal, but give me the answer to a decimal. Is a spade flush a good hand? The answer should be small, then. In fact, I think you're going to get an answer in scientific notation. Are you not? And you need to practice doing this on your calculator, which is why you want to try this. Otherwise, you'll be able to write the equation, but you won't be able to get the right answer. Kellen, what'd you get? Oh, never mind. Caught you zoning. Alex, what'd you get? Round it off properly, 9.5. 4.95 times 10 to the... So I'm going to go like this. Uh, 4.95 times 10 to the 
times 10 to the negative 4 or 0.123495. The odds of getting a spade flush, small. That's why it's a good hand. What I'm going to do for a card or a marble question, if order doesn't matter, I'm going to draw a bucket. B. B. Chelsea, can you read B to me, please? This bucket's going to have three compartments. Spades, hearts, and others. Chelsea, how many spades are there in the deck? How many hearts? How many leftover others? Yep. How many spades do they want me to choose? Three. How many hearts? How many others? Trick question. Here's what the equation is going to look like. 13 spades choose three and 13 hearts choose two and 39, uh, 39 Mr. Duick and 26 others choose none divided by 52 cards choose 5. And before you start typing, look up. What is 26 choose 0? 1. Well, I type that then. No, did you guys type 39 choose 0 last time? Don't need to, but I'm always going to write it. Here's why. Look up. So before you're typing, Steph, look up. Here is your built-in error check for this method. If you add the first number, look up, look up, look up, Chelsea. If you add the first number and the first number, you get the first number. If you add the last number and the last number, you get the last number. Don't believe me? Add first plus first plus first, it's first. Add last plus last plus last, it's last. There is your built-in error check to see if you've missed something. Did that make you follow that, Chelsea? Yeah. Handy. Also, if you're not sure what goes on the bottom, that, that, if you're ever wondering. Now start typing. Don't bother typing the 26, choose 0. So it's going to be 13, choose 3, and 13, choose 2, divided by 52, choose 5. Not great odds, 0.00858, 00858, which actually kind of makes sense to me because how many different suits are there? Four. If we're picking five cards, shouldn't we on average have one of each? And this is saying, what are the odds of only two? Not very good. Not very good. C. Three spades and two non-spades. Once again, bucket. But here I'm only going to have two categories because it's spades and non-spades. Leslie, how many spades are in the deck, kiddo? How many non-spades? 39, right? How are we doing? Compliment, right? We're not counting, right? 52 minus 30. Yeah, whatever's left. How many spades do they want us to choose? How many non-spades? What's the equation? 13 choose 3 and 39 choose 2. That's how many ways to get 3 spades and non-spades. That's what we did last unit. To turn it into a probability, all we do is divide by the total number of outcomes. Oh, 52 choose 5. Thirteen choose three times thirty-nine choose two. Fifty-two choose five. Point zero eight one five. Round it off properly, Mr. Dewitt? Yes. Okay. So this is there are exactly three spades. D. There are exactly how many spades? Two. Now, it's going to be a very similar bucket, spades and non-spades. Let's see if we can use this bucket to get the equation. Let's see if we can jump straight to the punchline here. It's going to be 
from 13 spades, choose how many? Two. And from 39 remaining, choose how many? Three divided by, that's how many different ways to get that hand, divided by the total number of ways to get any hand. 52, choose five. I think I can just go second function enter, change that three to a two, change that two to a three. 0.2743. About a 27% chance. That makes a bit more sense to me because getting two of the same color isn't that unlikely. You okay there? Okay. I have no idea what happened, but I'm going to pick five cards. One, two, three, four, five. I've got about a one in four chance, 27%, of getting exactly two spades. Did I? Nope. Well, actually, that makes sense. So I got about a three out of four chance of not getting exactly two spades. In this case, I got one. Getting two spades is not a good poker hand. Let's actually look at a half-decent poker hand. E. Two pair, aces and kings. Bucket. This is going to have three categories. Aces, kings, and the complement, whatever's left over, other. Sally, how many aces are in the deck? Four. How many kings are in the deck? Four. How many others are left over? Complement. Yes. 44. How many aces did you want me to choose? How many kings did you want me to choose? How many others must I choose by default then? One. So this is going to end up being four choose two and four choose two and from the remaining 44 choose one divided by, divided by what? Well, if you add the first numbers, you do get 52 choose five. This is a good hand. Odds should be small. Like, I'm guessing less than 1%. What do you get? 6.09 times 10 to the negative 4 or 0 0.000609. Um, what's a better hand, a flush or two pair? A flush. So check out your odds. Which one has a smaller number? A or E? A does just slightly, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Could you extend this to seven, Luke? Yeah. So, fine. I'm not going to bother. Five cards is kind of what I set up most of my stuff for. But seven cards, your bucket would be maybe one more category, and it'd be 52. Choose seven on the bottom. Turn the page. Now, when would you use permutations? Hannah, there's two answers to that. The first answer is when it's clear the order matters, but the second answer is really not very often. And I'll show you what I mean. Example two says three prizes are awarded in a raffle. 100 people each hold one ticket. What's the probability that A, B, and C win first, second, and third places respectively. What does the word respectively mean? In that order, it is a permutation. Okay? And I'm going to show you how we can solve this with a permutation in just a second. But remember I said not very often? You see, I can do this with a tree. And it's a three-level tree, but I'm only going to draw one branch. I'm going to draw... Alice, Ben, and Conchetta. That's the only branch I'm interested in. Luke, that's the only branch I'm interested in. And the reason I can draw a tree for this one, Leslie, even though it's three levels, is because each event is the same. Win, win, win. 
I can keep track of one branch, I think, okay. In fact, how many Alice's are there in the group? One out of how many people bought a ticket? 100. Okay, Alice one. How many Ben's are there in the card deck? One out of how many cards are left? 99. See where I'm going? How many Conchettas are there in the card deck? One out of how many cards are left? 98. So one way of doing this is to go 1 over 100 times 1 over 99 times 1 over 98. And that ties into what you've already done. But there is another way to do this that's shorter. Does order matter in this question, Greg? Then out of 100 people, there are 100 P3 ways to pick three winners where the order matters. How many of those are our winning group of Alice, Ben, and Conchetta? Only one. By the way, 100 P3 is 100 times 99 times 98. What do we get? One over, what is 100 P3? Or what is 100 times 99 times 98? Alyssa, read it to me. 907,000. 9, 7. Like that? Is that right? Okay. Now compare A, Blaine, with B. Does order matter in B, Blaine, my friend? You know, how do you know? Because it says, not necessarily in that order. How else do you know? Cards is almost always order, doesn't matter. So if it's a card question, don't use, use choose. Here, then, I'm going to use a bucket. And in my bucket, I'm going to have winners and losers. Not winners. How many winners are there in our bucket? Three. How many losers are there in this group? 97. How many winners do I want to choose? All three. How many losers do I want to choose? None. What's the equation going to be, Connor, the unmasked? No, the unmasked. The unmasked. Oh, now everyone knows your identity. Way to go. You were doing so well. Go ahead, Connor. Three choose three. And divided by what? Can you... 100 choose 3. Did you actually go 100 choose 3 or did you use my first, first, last, last? Either it works. By the way, what is 3 choose 3? 1. What's 97 choose 0? This is going to be 1 over whatever the heck 100 choose 3 is. What is 100 choose 3, Steph? Oh. oh, we still haven't found a workaround for that yet, have we? Okay. We may have to trade off on the test that day. I think I might have made the test up so that all the questions will work, but if not, remind me on test day. Sally. 161700. And what this lets us do is finally, at long last, finally get to Lotto 649. Okay. In Lotto 649, there's 49 numbers to pick from, and how many do you have to get right to win the grand prize? Six. That's why it's called 649. So let's figure out the probability that we win the grand prize. First of all, it doesn't matter what order they choose your numbers. All that matters is, did your numbers get chosen? So this is a bucket question. We have two groups of numbers. Winners, losers. How many winning numbers are there? Six. How many losers are there? 43. 
for the grand prize, how many winning numbers do I want to get? How many losers do I want to pick? So I think it's going to be 6 choose 6 and 43 choose 0 divided by what? Choose what? From 49 random numbers, choose any 6. And if you weren't sure, Hannah, first plus first equals first, last plus last equals last. By the way, what is 6 choose 6 on the top 1? What's anything choose 0? Okay, the top works out to 1. So just type in the bottom, 49 choose 6. What is your chance of winning the grand prize? It's just below 14 million. Blaine, read me the numbers. 1, 3. 3, 8. 1, 6. Chance of uh, missing the comma there. <coughs> chance of winning, 1 in 14 million is what they say. Oh, actually, this isn't quite right. This is chance of winning the grand prize, and they just said chance of winning. You could win by getting six numbers, or five, or four, or three, I think. I'm not sure. What does or mean? Yeah, you could do each of them separately and then just add them up. Not that hard. But that's where that number on the back of the lotto ticket comes from. Or, as my, and I think I've passed this on to you already, but as my math prof used to always say, I win $7 a week on Lotto 649 because I don't buy a ticket each day. That was back when they were $1. And he was saying, if you're buying a Lotto ticket expecting to get any kind of money back, you're throwing away money. You may as well just toss your money in the trash. With odds of 1 in 14 million, he is correct. Luke, what was your question? Hard me, I you saying. Why that? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of things would be really cool. It'd be cool if you combed your hair. Or what, uh, okay. You could come here and totally make fun of me. By the way, numerous studies, numerous studies have shown that the vast majority of people who win a big lottery within five years regret it because it changes their life so negatively. Very few people can deal with that big a lifestyle change. They have, they lose all their friends because all their friends start asking them for money. Often, if it's a couple, there's an ugly divorce or a split because they don't know how to deal with money. Uh, numerous studies have shown that. In all honesty, if I wanted to win a lottery, I would like to win enough to buy a house but still work. Because honestly, I'd miss this job. Little advice for you. Don't go for the grand prize. Try and win a prize that will make things a bit easier but won't so change things that suddenly your whole life is messed up. On your own right now, Try B, exactly three. How many winners does that mean if they pick only three numbers? Three. How many losers? Three. And give me this one as a decimal. Gary, just put the test face down on the correct block. What do you get? Zero one seven seven. Round it off properly. Okay. So you got about one percent chance of getting three numbers right. Yeah, I don't think. I'm trying to remember, they give a $10 prize out. That might be for matching three. I think it's for matching four, though. I don't think you do. That's the last thing they want to do. Because <clears throat> that might mean that free ticket, you win the big bucks, and they didn't get any of the lottery money. They're very reluctant to give out free tickets. I told you guys, though, a guy in Toronto, this is about two months old now, a guy in Toronto cracked the uh, barcodes on the scratch and win. So he was able to identify winners about 80% of the time before scratching them. And in fact, he taught it to his 10-year-old kid. He's a mathematician. He taught it to his 10-year-old kid. And so she would go in the store and point to the winners. So he reported it to the Lotto, uh, Ontario Lotto Company. Uh, Google, because they haven't changed much of it. 
Scratch and Win are made by two major companies, and the first major company denied that there was any such pattern. I'm not a big fan of lotteries. They're a tax on the stupid, I really think. But such is life. Hey, workbook. Open, please. Are you saying you're stupid? No, I'm saying that you don't have good math skills. You know what? They're a tax on people with bad math. That's what I really should have said. Can you turn, please? To page 473, page 473, and we're going to jump right down to example three. Okay. And in example three, we have a bag of marbles. Kim, read carefully. How many marbles are we choosing? Tree. Tree? Probably not. Probably not. Uh, look at A. Does the order matter? And I'm going to say no. Look at B. Does the order matter? I'm going to say no. And here's how I know that it doesn't matter in A and B. Look at C. Does the order matter there? So you know what? For A and B, bucket. And I'm going to do my bucket over here. And it looks like I'm going to have red, green, and blue marbles. How many red marbles in the bucket? Five. How many greens? Three. How many blues? Six. Kim, how many marbles did you say that we were taking? Okay. No. How many marbles are we choosing to start out grand total? Three. What does part A want? Okay, so from six blues, choose two. And I'm going to treat this as one bin and call it others. How many other marbles are there? Eight, choose how many? One. Divided by what? Hey. How about using first plus first equals and last plus last? Divided by what? 14, choose 3. Are you guys okay in typing these in? Then I'm going to skip the typing so you can find the answer later, Steph. I just, because I, the hard part's the equation. Um, B, at least one is blue. Now, what does that mean? That means one or, or. So we could do it that way. What would be a more clever way to do it? What's the opposite of at least one is blue? Greg, what's the opposite of at least one is blue? Sally, none. You know, it'd be way easier to do the complement. Okay? We could go one or two or three. Sally, what does or mean? And you'd have one of these plus one of these plus one of these, which works fine. Oh, and by the way, 2 would be exactly this. But I think it's going to be 1 minus the probability of none. Way easier. 1 minus, how many blue do I want to get? How many blue were there? 6 choose 0. And from the remaining others, 8 choose all 3 divided by 14 choose three. Hannah, way faster. Either method you'll get full marks for, by the way. One or two or three works fine, but you know what? Compliment. Nicer. C, choose or permutation. Does order matter or not? How can you tell? Okay, words like first, second, and first, a third, or if they say followed by or that something, something, and then something, something. So if order clearly matters, you know what we're going to do? We're going to visualize the tree. This is going to be the probability of red on the first, green on the second, blue on the third. Let's see if we can just walk down this tree. This is why I don't do a big song and dance about permutations. Trees actually are permutations, and we've been doing trees for a while. 
I've been doing trees for a while. Matt, how many red marbles are there in the bag at the very beginning? Out of grand total? 14. And, okay, we picked a red marble. What do we want to pick next, Mac? How many greens are left? Out of how many marbles are left? See where we're going? And, okay, now we want to pick a blue marble for the third one. How many blues are left? Out of? That's how I would do a permutation question. It is true that 14 times 13 times 12 is 14p3. Well, I'm not so sure that's a big time savings. Um, one is red, one is green, and one is blue. That would be 5 choose 1, 3 choose 1, 6 choose 1 over 14 choose 3. Right? Right? Oh, because it didn't say the first is red, the second is green, and the third is blue. It just said any order. So that's a choose again. It's a bucket. Very handy. Turn the page. Example four. City council consists of nine men and six women. We're going to pick three representatives. How many representatives, Kellen? Tree? No. No. Choo ah, I, I, maybe I could do this with a tree, but for three people or more, I'll use uh, permutations and chooses and buckets. I know, three and tree sound the same. I know. I know. Okay. A, what's the probability that Mayor Jim and two women are chosen? Does this mention order at all? So this is a bucket, except I'm going to have to modify my bucket I can't just have nine guys and six girls because they've singled out a specific person. Who have they singled out in this question? Okay, my bucket's going to have three categories. Mayor Jim, I'll use the letter J for Ma Mayor Jim. How many Mayor Jims are there? One. And then males, how many males are there left over once we've, assuming Mayor Jim is a male? Eight. And how many females are there? Six. How many Mayor Jims do we want to choose? One. How many of the remaining men do we want to choose? Zero, because how many females do we want to choose? Can you see what the top row is going to be? One choose one and eight choose zero and six choose two all over, all over what? 15 choose 3. By the way, what is 1 choose 1? One? 1. What is 8 choose 0? 1. I would just go 6 choose 2 over 15 choose 3. Again, you guys have said that you're typing these in okay. I'm not going to worry about the typing. You'll do that in the homework. B. What's the difference between A and B? In B, they're telling you we already know the mayor is on the committee. In A, we were asking what are the odds that he shows up. B, they're saying, yes, be on there. Has to be. Ready he is. So my bucket's going to get modified just a little bit. My bucket's only going to have two categories. It's going to have males and females. Eight of them, not nine, because Mayor Jim is already on the committee. And six. How many males do we want to choose? Still zero. How many females? Still two. It's going to be eight choose zero and six choose two divided by 15 choose, not three, two. 14, sorry, 14, choose 2. How did you spot that, Sally? Because first plus first, that's a handy built-in error check. 14, choose 2. Oh, and if you really wanted to be fussy, you could say, and a 100% that the mayor is on there, and 100% chance is 1. So there, the mayor for sure, and two girls from the remaining 14 people. 
Okay, we've done card questions. We'll finish off with birthdays. And this will help explain the weird answers that I was telling you occur. It says this, in a class of 30 students, find the probability that everyone has a different birthday. Okay, so let's start with Steph. We're going to start out using the fundamental counting principle. We have 30 different birthdays that we want to fill in. How many choices do you have? Starting out, you have 365 days to pick from because no one overlaps with you yet. But once you've picked your day, you know how many days that Leslie has to pick from? 364. And do you know how many days that Kellen has to pick from for his to be different from both of yours? 360. I'm going to go dot, dot, dot. And we're going to do this for 30 students. There will be a 362 and a 300. We do it 30 times. You know what? Actually, what we're saying is go like this. From 365 days, permutate 30 of them. That's how many different ways out of the year that we can spread 30 days among 30 students. What does 365 permutate 30? Two point one seven times ten to the seventy six. Is that right, folks? No? No, oh, yes? That's how many different ways we can two point one seven? Times ten to the seventy six? Okay. Now that's the number of ways without overlapping. What's the total number of ways? Well, the total number of ways is, again, I could draw 30 blanks. I'm just going to draw four. 365, 365, 365, 360. Because that's how many days you all have to choose from if we didn't have any restrictions. How many 365s would I write in a row for 30 students? OK. This is going to be 365 to the 30th. Here is your actual answer. If you want the number of the probability that they all have different birthdays, it's going to be 365p30 divided by 365 to the 30th. It's going to be 365p30 divided by 365 to the power of 30. The odds that they're all different, 0.29. So that's the odds that everyone is different. What are the odds that at least two of them have the same birthday? How can I use this number to figure out if this is all different, zero having the same? How can I find uh, at least two of them having the same? Complement. Yeah. This is going to be 1 minus 0.29. What are the odds if I had 30 of you guys of me winning my bet? 0.71? So really quickly, let's fix the numbers for what we had. How many were in this class, did we say? 23? No, what was it, 21? What was it? 21. So 21, 21, uh, that's the odds of all different. So if I go 1 minus that, that's the odds of two or more the same. I won when I should not have. Sorry, Alyssa. What's the magic number? <coughs> the odds of winning when there's 24 slightly above 50 percent oh if there's like 36 people not very big house party or whatever and you can get somebody to make this bet
I'll take that bet anytime. Anytime. By the time you get to 40, it's like 99 point something. Essentially as guaranteed a win as you'll ever get in probability theory. The birthday problem. Now, I've showed you the birthday problem because of its nerdiness. I will not ask you it. I think in terms of difficulty, this is just a little bit high for what I'm asking you to deal with, although it is a neat application of permutations and fundamental counting principle uh, for more than two objects. I'm not going to throw that one at you on the test. But certainly something like uh, number five, or what's your homework? Okay. One is good. Two B. Now two B. How many marbles are we taking in question number two? Two. You can do it with a tree, and that's what I would do on a test. But for practice, try it with combinations and permutations. Three is good. Four is good. Nine A and C, so skip B. And 10. One more lesson, although it'll probably take me two days to get through it. Your guys' test block D is going to be next Friday, a week from three days from now. I will probably be doing a tutorial next week, Wednesday, or Tuesday. I'm not sure. I'll let you know. Next Friday? That's why I'm trying to give you no homework for your grad. Now, if you're not going to be here because it's going to take you all day to get your hair done, it means you're going to have to find a time to write it Thursday after school or Thursday during the day during one of your many study blocks. Unless you feel like writing it after grad, I'd write it before. We're running into May long weekend and stuff, and I can't, I you can't bump things much further than that. Okay. The what? It's not a video. 